Hi, my name's Mark. Today I'll be teaching you how to use SmartCat, and if this is useful for you, don't forget to subscribe for more useful translating content. Alright, let's go. So, we're going to start with our document to translate. Good news for everybody is this is a document about pizza, a very short text that I've just put together. Um, it's a topic that's very close to my heart, and probably for you too, I hope. So, to start off with, we're going to create our project. In terms of actually getting into SmartCat and getting to where we are now, all you have to do is log in using either a Google uh, login if you have. You can use Facebook or you can log in with an email. No problem. And create an account. So, we're going to create a project just by clicking here to begin with. So, let's start by finding our file. Here we go. We're just going to drag and drop that in to our interface here. So you can see here our pizza.docx file will now appear right here. Obviously you could use uh, an Excel file, PowerPoint, something else. Usually you'll still be able to work with these. Uh, you can add a translation memory like a TMX file if you have as well or any reference files that you might want to go with um, just to remind you, you know, there might be a style guide or something else. The only thing that I would say is that in terms of working with Trados packages, sometimes SmartCat works brilliantly, sometimes it will just give up um, when you click next because uh, I think there's a, a potentially a file limit issue, sometimes it just doesn't like big Trados packages, sometimes you might get away with it. So we're gonna click next and go on to our next screen here. So we've got a project name, which is pizza. We can add a deadline here if we want to. So the source language for today is Russian. We're translating into English, so I'm going to click that here. Uh, you have the option as well to use machine translation, although that comes with the caveat that I believe if you do that, SmartCat has the right to use your data in your translations. So it's something that you might want to not do if you're worried about privacy or uh, you know other regulations. We're going to click finish. So I'm just going to give it a minute and the program will automatically get our translation ready. So we're just going to see it come up here. Pizza, this is our project. So we're going to click to open right here and that wonderful text that you saw earlier in my doc file has now been split up into lines. Obviously if you have a big project, your project will probably be bigger than this. You'll see more lines, but this is just for the purpose of today of showing you how it all works. So here we have our source uh, text split up, and we're going to type our translations on the right side here. So for our first line, easy, we've got pizza. So we put our translation in, and we then want to confirm the segments. The easiest way to do this is to hit Control and Enter. You'll see now that on the right side, you'll come up with a nice green tick here that just confirms that your segment has been done. Perfect. We're going to go into our next line. Margarita pizza. I'm so hungry now. Tomato sauce. Cheese and herbs. I have left that typo in on purpose, don't worry, we'll come back to that in a second. So again, we'll hit Control and Enter to confirm. I'll explain the meaning of this little yellow triangle in a second for you. Here we've got types. Perfect. So for our last line, we have a piece of text actually that is already in our target language. So what we can do here, instead of typing it out, we can just click on the arrow here, which will automatically fill our text in. Perfect. We can then confirm. So we've now got the message come up that our document is done, so we're going to stay. So this is a point where you want to check through your translation once you've completed. So the first thing to do is to go back to those yellow triangles that I mentioned earlier. So we have one here which says misspelled words. Oopsie. Okay, so two things. We can obviously type that in ourselves or we can right click and we should have an option here which is source. There we go, perfect. So if we reconfirm that segment, and we take a look at our yellow triangle, it should, with a click of the fingers, just disappear. And there we go. Let's see the warning here for our last segment. Source and target are identical. So SmartCat is a little bit unhappy here. It's just saying, mm, you know, are you sure this is what you wanted to put in? Didn't you want to translate this line? Obviously, we're fine. This is okay. So 
this is a really useful function because you'll find that it comes up with a, new, a number of different things that you might have done wrong. It's particularly good at picking up numbers that you've put in incorrectly um, or other little formatting things. You know, if you've missed a, a period at the end of a sentence or a comma, um, it'll usually warn you about that, which is really good. Just to make sure that your final translation has no errors at all. So now that we're done, we want to export our translation and our file. So we're just going to click that back arrow to go back to the main screen, which is where we were earlier. Now we have a couple of options in terms of the export. So probably what you'll want is just a simple doc file to get the same format back that we started with. So we'll highlight our file here. Then we can just click resulting file. We'll just wait for the downloads. To, to take place um, and that will just give us a final file which should be done perfectly. We can't wait for that. Um, there's another couple of options that you might get um, just while we're waiting for SmartCat. For example, you might want to download as a bilingual file and I'll show you how to do that in a second. So let's just open our pizza file. So we had a Russian file. Perfect, here we are. This is our done and finished translation ready to send off to a client or to our agency. So I promised that I'd show you how to export as a bilingual or other option file. If we go into special formats, if you want to pull out your file, for example, as a bilingual doc, um, maybe where you want to compare both sides or as an XLIF, that's something that your agency, uh, you know, or your client wants in the end, you have the option to export right there. So thanks very much for watching today. I really hope that this will help you get started with SmartCat. If you've got any questions at all, just write in the comments. And as well, don't forget to subscribe so that you can get further useful videos like this in the future. So have yourselves a great rest of the day. See you later. Bye.